Hey, what's happening, all my dragonlings? I am your dragon god of gaming, Damien Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of the Gaming News, where I run down the list of all the gaming news, facts, rumors, trivia, and everything coming out the gaming industry this week. Before I hop into the news, I do want to cover this, and I want to preface this real quick. First off, as everyone knows, next Saturday is Christmas. And what happens right after that? <laughs> the gaming news, which is on Sunday. So, me, Tui, and Chaos came to an agreement here that we're trying to have our, you know, we're trying to take Christmas off. Yeah, um... We are, we're not tired, but more or less like, we want to be able to enjoy our holidays. We don't really get to. A lot of the time we're recording, we're editing, we're streaming, we are doing all this, and to be honest, we are barely getting any time for ourselves. So the guys decided to give me a uh, day off next weekend, which is not normal because normally I have never really taken a day off from the gaming news since its inception. The gaming news has always gone up and this is probably the first time I believe it has not gone up, which is gonna be next week. So shit. <laughs> anyway, put your pitchforks and torches down. I need a holiday off regardless. I think I've been working myself a little bit too hard and I believe the guys would agree. I'm the only one in the group that really has not taken time off from the videos. Besides the, you know, the new guys, the new people here, Cyclonic like Wufos and White, White Kong, that has just started. I believe I'm one of the only ones who has not taken a break yet, so they're forced to be to take a break. <laughs> and to be honest, it's well needed. So, no gaming news this coming Sunday, so I appreciate Chaos and I appreciate Tui for allowing me to take the day off. Um, well, I think I can take a day off whenever the fuck I please. But you want something, it is what it is. Uh, it came to a consensus that we should be taking off our, our holidays. So, it is what it is. Anyway, with that out the way, let's get into the gaming news. Okay, Hades, 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 Hades. If you guys do not know what Hades is, well, you should. And... If you don't know what Hades is, um, well, you should, because it seems like Hades is adding another accolade to its trophy list. This news is coming way up PC Gamer, but at the 79th annual Worldcon, or if you fancy, the Discon 3, the Hugo Awards was handed out, and you guys can guess that Hades won over the other nominees, such as Animal Crossing, New Horizons, Baseball, Final Fantasy VII Remake, which we covered, which we talked about like last week. It is 7 in the morning. I have not slept yet. <laughs> the Last of Us Part Two and Spiritfarer. The Hugo Awards, for those of you that don't know, has been recognizing the best works of science fiction since 1953. And since its inception, has added a number of categories such as Best Graphic Story, which was added back in 2009. Hades has won other awards, such as GDC's Game of the uh, Game of the Year, and the BAFTAs for Best Game Art Artistic Achievement, Game Design, Narrative, and Performer and Supporting Role, which one of the um, one of the voice actors did win for, which is. <laughs> so if you guys have not went out, gone off, and played Hades, I suggest you should. Really cool game. Really cool graphics. I have not played it yet, but I want to. The game looks exciting, and from the screenshots, I'm pretty sure you guys just seen. Hope it's worth it to you. Anyway, um, you know what's funny? That that was actually the only news uh, story I was gonna cover today. Why? Because if you guys, as I said, the gaming news is not gonna be going up next week, which means this is my final gaming news of 2021. So, I think it's only fair. That Damian Dragon does his own coverage of the top games of 2021. 
well, I'm going to say the top three games of 2021, based on my opinion, and the top ten games that I've covered on any channel I've covered on. So that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. So, the first game, I'm going to, I'm going to start off with the uh, top three games for you guys uh, of 2021, based on my opinion, again. You guys can have different opinions. That's all on you. Um, the first game, I think, is Resident Evil Village. Yeah, it's weird. It came out this year. Weird, right? I also played this game on uh, Invisible Corporations, and the game is so good looking, and it definitely deserves its spot. But I believe uh, Resident Evil Village was so hyped, and it lived up to the hype. So good. So good. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to be covering this in a little bit, so I'll just relax. Um, the, the second one, I think, is Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I believe a lot of people who really like the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, well, the Mass Effect Trilogy, really was getting into the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. We all deserved it after the hellstorm that was Andromeda. And I really, really like it. I'm actually covering Mass Effect right now over on my channel when I'm playing uh, Mass Effect 2 at the moment. I covered Mass Effect 1, which has already been done, which is yay. But Mass Effect 2, <sighs> orgasm noises. <laughs> I love Mass Effect, and Mass Effect 2 is just beautiful. I'm going through that game with just, you know, silver eyes, just just glittering at everything it looks so good so yeah that's at least what i think and the third game that i think was one of the best is actually a game that just came out fnaf security breach everyone has been waiting for the next release in the five nights at freddy series fnaf security breach we've been waiting it has dropped now I don't know what to expect. Why? Because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be playing the game this coming January. I'm not gonna spoil it my damn self. I am gonna record myself playing it, which I'm gonna be playing probably over on Twitch in um, January. I want to play FNAF Security Breach. I want to get scared. I don't want to see any spoilers. If you guys spoil it for me, I'm going to be pissed. But I'm going to be playing FNAF Security Breach probably over on Twitch. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't fucking wait. <laughs> it's going to be glorious. So, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope uh, you guys like that. Uh, so, I believe those are the top three uh, games of 2021 that I personally think so. I know there's many other games that deserve the spot, like Returnal, Back for Blood, I believe it's called, uh, Shin Megami Tensai, that game actually just came out, I don't think it just came out, but you know what I mean. There's plenty of other games that just that came out that deserve a spot as well, but at least those are three games that I think was just, you know, head over heels, one of the best of 2021. If you have different opinions than me, let me know that in the comments. Anyway. I want to give my top 10 games I have covered in 2021. So, I'm going to go from 10 to 1. So, here we go. Number 10. Devil May Cry. Yeah. I've played Devil May Cry. Obviously, you guys, seen, you guys are basically seeing me play right now. Um, as you guys are watching this right now, I... I, I've played it and it's been freaking phenomenal. I've been enjoying the game so much. I have never beaten the game, so it's surreal for me having to go so far. Um, so I'm very happy to, and very soon I do want to cover dry, um, play Devil May Cry 2, which, yeah. <laughs> so I can't wait to uh, play Devil May Cry 2, but Devil May Cry was you know, a shocker to me to sit back and play, and I've I've been enjoying it. 
Number nine. Super Mario Odyssey. As you guys see, that these games are not did not come out in 2021, but these are the games I've covered in 2021. So, I've recently I've only played six episodes of Super Mario Odyssey, and I streamed it. Uh, and the game was hilariously fun. Um, I've been watching people for so long play Super Mario Odyssey, people speedrunning Odyssey, and you know, me sitting back and, and it's like, huh, <laughs> you know what I mean, just, huh. And then I got to playing it, I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> the game looks great, the game is phenomenal, and it makes you wonder, What's next from Mario? You know what I mean? Probably soon we'll find out. Anyway. Number 8. Delta Rune Chapter 2. Oh my fucking god. I played this in October. And I was playing Stranger Things 3. I got soft locked out of the game. And... I picked and... Chapter th chapter two just came out, and I'm just sitting there like, there's no fucking way I'm not playing this. <laughs> I didn't give anyone a notice. I was just like, I'm playing this and I'm playing this. I'm playing this. I'm playing this, and I'm so fucking glad I did. I love chapter two, and it was on Switch as well. <laughs> Funny, so good. The commentary is amazing. Toby Fox has outdone himself. Oh my god, I cannot, it, it made me want to see chapter, chapter 3, I want to see what happens in chapter 3. The game is phenomenal, I covered it and I could not stop fucking laughing. <laughs> every moment, every moment was hilarious. Oh my god, and one of my favorite characters was fucking Ralse. Ralse was just, one of those characters was just like, you know, he's charming, but also has some of the funniest lines. <laughs> It, it was Rose, Lancer, and one of the new characters that you get to know in uh, Chapter 2, but you did meet in Chapter 1. So you got, if you guys have not picked up Chapter 2, and I, I don't know what if you're doing with yourself, go play Chapter 2. Please go play Delta Room. It is free. It is free. It is free. Play it. Number seven, slide four, Thieves in Time. Now, for those of you that don't know, my favorite game of all time is Sly Cooper. I love the Sly Cooper series. And I heard talks of Sly 5. Do not play with my emotions. But I've been longing for the day where I got to sit back and record Sly 4 Thieves in Time. And I had gotten to do that. I believe in uh, September. I, not even, I believe it was in November. When did I cover Sly 4? <laughs> when was the last, when did I cover Sly 4? The last episode, yep, November. It was in November. I got when I got to pick up Sly Four. I was, I I was so happy. I didn't care how many times it crashed. Did not care how many times you know I had to restart. I wanted to cover the entirety of the game, which I got to do, and I was smiling ear to ear that I finally have on my channel. Not slide, just slide one, two, and three, but now I have all four. I want slide five, so I cannot wait for that to come out. Next up, number six, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I actually did finish Kingdom Hearts. Um, I didn't want to be uh, spoiled because Cyclonic Wolf Wolves was actually covering Kingdom Hearts, I believe, over on her Twitch channel. And 
I politely excuse myself because I did not want to be spoiled. I have not watched much of the Kingdom Hearts series. I've seen a little bit of Kingdom Hearts 4, but it was that was only one level. I've seen the entirety of Kingdom Hearts 1. I want to play Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> and when I get to, it's just like... <laughs> It's going to be so good. The graphics were amazing. Everything was impeccable. The storytelling was just divine. I had the most fun in ages, even though I got really pissed off trying to figure out where the fuck I needed to go. But you want to know something? It is what it is. It happens. It happens. I do not care. I beat the game, and I'm feeling fucking good about it. So, yeah, Kingdom Hearts, 10 out of 10, would play again. <laughs> Next up, number 5. Yu-Gi-Oh! The False Bound Kingdom! You think Chaos is the only one that has played this among the group? No. <laughs> I actually covered it before him. I I covered it, I believe, around September. I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! The False Bound Kingdom. And I have only did Yu-Gi's uh, story mode. The gameplay was great. As a person who has not only play the games, follow the story of the of the anime season one where Yugi was there. I did not cover anything else. I do not like I did not like 5Ds or you know Zexo and all that. I like the original Yu-Gi-Oh. And I I wasn't just a player of the games. I was not just a watcher of the anime. I literally partook in tournaments. Physical tournaments for playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I didn't just play the TCG games for Pokemon. I played Yu-Gi-Oh as well, and I was pretty fucking good at it back then. Now, not so much. But back then, I used to be the shit. <laughs> at least I felt like it. So I loved covering it. You know, the monsters looked so good, and then. Finally, when I was able to get my hands on Dark Magician, I felt a sense of just nostalgia. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't the original, well, it was the original Dark Magician. I needed to take that back. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> so, yeah. Love playing Yu Gi Oh! The False Bound Kingdom. Next up, number four Sleeping Dogs, the Definitive Edition. I love anything that has to do with me kicking the fuck out of somebody on the middle in the middle of the street. <laughs> when I played uh, Sleeping Dogs: The Definitive Edition, I didn't think too much of it until I got to playing it. I remembered playing it a little bit when um, the game first came out, but when I got to play sit down and play the Definitive Edition, I was just like, "Oh, mama." <laughs> the game looks good. The game play is good. The action is really smooth. The stealth, not not the stealth mechanics, but I mean like the fighting mechanics, just flow beautifully. And I enjoy playing Sleeping Dogs. Just becoming a Yakuza tough. Come on, not Yakuza, but you know, mafia type thing. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Now going into my top three, number three, Assassin's Creed Two. I've covered Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag over on my channel, but one of the, my highlights was completing Assassin's Creed 2 on a recording. Because that game was so old, but also it was still good. I loved playing Ezio Adetore, and playing, getting to play a game like that was just really cool to me. I didn't play Assassin's Creed 1, I want to play Assassin's Creed 1. I had never picked up Assassin's Creed 1, but Assassin's Creed 2 was just beautiful, I enjoyed the game. And I do want to play, you know, Brotherhood and uh, Assassin's Creed 3, which I never got to play in my life. I really want to get to it, so I hope that uh, very soon I'll be able to pick those up. But Assassin's Creed 2 was the shit to me. <laughs> but, because, why? Because I love the Assassin's Creed franchise. Anyway, number two. Number two, number two, number two. Resident Evil Village. Yeah, it was that damn good. I loved the game. 
Not just because, you know, her. I loved the game because it was so beautifully put. The game looks freaking amazing. The graphics look so astounding. The immersiveness inside the game. It literally had me on the edge of my seat every single night I played it. And yes, I literally played it literally at night because of the game. I don't normally put time limits on where I play the games. But for that, I had to make an exception. It was needed to play at night because you need to have that ambiance. And that game made ambiance real fucking difficult to come by when it came to playing during the day. I did not want to play it during the day. I wanted to play it literally at night. I literally set myself a time at like 11 to 12 o'clock while I sat back and recorded episode after episode after episode after episode getting through those games. And getting to see Lady Demetrescu's ass so much was an also an up for me as well. <laughs> that is all, folks. <laughs> Literally to the point where Chaos uh, sent me a Twitter notification for uh, G Fuel. <laughs> he's, he's, it was a Lady Demetrius G, G Fuel uh, flavor. And he was like, Amy Prince brought me a drink. That's all like, you're trying to get me. Are you trying to just make me simp to buy? <laughs> Oh my god. I swear one of these days if we ever get as many fans as we do there's going to be fan art of me and Lady Demetrius. I swear to god. But until then 10 out of 10 Lady Demetrius's ass I mean Resident Evil Village would we'll play again. Moving onward. <laughs> Number 1 Subnautica. I have never played a game so immersive in my fucking life. It actually made me fucking feel something. I almost cried on one of the last episodes. That was how good the game was. It made you feel. It literally made you fucking feel. First off, it nearly made me shit my fucking pants. <laughs> Not literally, but metaphorically, it almost made me shit my pants. But literally almost made me cry on one of the last ones because I felt so fucking bad. If you guys never seen Subnautica, go check out my gameplay. It's one of the things I will literally say, please go watch the gameplay. It was so fucking good, so fluent. It was it just felt so right. And when I ended the game, if you guys know what Subnautica is and you've played the regular Subnautica game, not below zero, but Subnautica itself, and you guys seen the ending, tell me you did not feel something for that creature. I did. I'm not going to spoil the game for you, but literally, it's the one time I literally had to sit back and say, what the fuck did I just do? I, I don't feel for shit, but it's the one time I literally sat back and said, I am feeling fucking something right now. And meant it. And meant it. I actually felt so fucking bad. So, if you guys want to go, I, I would say the first thing, go check out my YouTube channel and go check out Subnautica. Because, it's the one time there where I'm literally sitting on the edge of my seat most of the game, and I'm just like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> and then when I get into the story, what the fuck is he even trying to kill me? And then the, at the end, I'm like, what the fuck have I done? <laughs> it, it, it literally put me through the five stages of fucking grief, man. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, that's my top list for 2021. If you guys have a different list, please leave it down in the comment section below. I'd love to read it. And it's been divine talking with you all. I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. hope everyone has a happy holidays. And I hope everyone enjoys their new year. You guys have been incredible. Thank you for an incredible 2021. From... I, I can speak for all of us here at the Invisible Corporation when I say thank you. You guys made 2021 a blessing for us. And I hope 
we gave you some happiness along the way. So, from my family to your, you guys, I, I'm not going to be recording at all for the rest of the week. Well, there's already an episode out for uh, Double May Cry for this coming Wednesday. I don't know if I say it there, but Merry Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. And from my family to yours, Happy Holidays, and have a safe New Year. I will see you guys in 2022 for the next gaming news. But until then, down in the description down below is all of our lovely and beautiful content creators. Go check them all out. They are a lovely bunch of reindeers, and you should go check them out. If you guys like what I do over here, Daddy Claus over here, if you guys enjoy what I do, I can guarantee you that you're going to love my little elves over there. <laughs> They are just as good. I may bring the devilishly good cheer when it comes to my content, but I can guarantee you if you go over there, they spread their own kind of just happy holiday Christmas cheer over there. So go give them a hug. Go give them some love. Tell them the dragon sent you, and I hope everyone enjoyed. Anyway, until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, by the way, subscribe, please. Subscribe, please. Thank you. It's a present, please. Hit the button. Hit it. Good. Anyway, till then, ladies and gentlemen, good gaming, happy hunting, and I'll see all you dragonlings back inside the world of the gaming news. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in 2022. I'll see you guys then, but until then, <sighs> peace.